please click the subscribe button and the notification icon. It will help us a lot. Hi, uh, this is Rodrigo from Level Up, and today I have the guest here, uh, Scott Lee. He's a great friend of mine who pretty much started entrepreneurship kind of at the same time that I did, and he's the founder of the Unspoken Speech, which pretty much is like a company that creates great designs for other companies in order so that pretty much they have an amazing first impression so that other clients pretty much will just buy directly in what they do. He has a lot of experience. Pretty much this is a guy that I admire a lot because sometimes I have given the strategies that I have in using and he has been getting like five times the results that I have with my own strategy. So that is something amazing that I really admire of him. And I'm really glad to have him on our first episode of Level Up. So welcome, Scott. Woo! Yeah, really excited, buddy. Uh, it's good to actually hear from you. I know it's been a while since we last interviewed, so it's a really good progress uh, next series. So I'm really excited for today's show. Definitely. So for the people who do not know about you, can you tell us a little bit about your story? How did you get started pretty much? How did you get the idea of creating the unspoken speech and, and the history of the unspoken speech as well as, well as its evolution? Excellent, excellent. Look, uh, when we started out, companies often had a very, very hard time explaining what it is that they do to other people. When we started out, we saw a lot of great presentations. Actually, when I started out, I should say I started out. Um, through this whole journey, I really wanted to get into business. And what actually happened was I was attending a lot of these business workshops. And one of the things that I saw as a common theme was they had great ideas, but their presentation slides are really crap and they sucked big time. And so what I did was I went to a lot of these events and one of my previous mentors uh, suggested that what it is that I could offer value to these speakers or what could I offer value to the world more like it. And at that time I had a lot of design skills. I had a lot of strategic skills as well. So what I did was I spoke to one of the speakers and I said, Hey, can I design some of your slides? And then from then onwards, what actually happened was I designed one of the slides and one of the speakers came up to me and said, listen, Scott, I'm going to be promoting your business. You know, I'm very thankful for the service you've done. Um, what is it called? And literally at that very moment, I had no name whatsoever. So what I did was the next 24 hours, I had to come up with a name, right? So I had um, vivid visuals and like PowerPoint experts and I literally had no idea whatsoever. So what I did was at that very day, I actually went to, instead of training at home, I decided to take the long route and walk home. And I went to a gallery and I just walked up to the first bunch of people and I said, hey, listen, I'm starting this business. It's around presentations. I have no idea what it's going to call it. And one of them was like the unspoken pitch. And I took that idea and literally the next 24 hours, I created a website, I created a real portfolio. And from then onwards, the next day that speaker was promoting me and I had like a lot of referrals coming in as well. And that's when the evolution of the unspoken pitch uh, evolved. Right. And since then, we thought it was a lot about making a presentation look beautiful, but then we realized people wanted to get the message quick. Right? How do we get our message quick? And then along with that is we have a lot of ideas, but how do we simplify that? And that's where infographics came about. And then along with that, you know, it starts to really get some feedback from the market and people were saying, listen, how do we strategize? How do we get our message across in the most clearest and effective way? And from that, we've been very fortunate to come in as a consultant and really understand the bird's eye view of how they're presenting ideas, how they're selling ideas, and how we can really summarize and simplify their pitch and their story and their idea into something that's very easy and simple for others to really understand. And since then, it's been amazing. We've been very fortunate to work with quite a lot of multinational companies uh, like McDonald's, to universities, to the top tier banks around Australia. And it's always been an evolving um, business in itself. And since then, it's, we've been very, very fortunate to have uh, been connected with great companies and been on this amazing journey with our clients. Yeah. Awesome. And something that I remember that you started doing as well, and I thought that this was really great, is that you started taking projects that were free and you were giving it 
to pretty much charities, organizations that were doing amazing projects and you were pretty much just giving the, uh, for every number of clients that you had, pretty much you created like this, uh, let's say this fund that obviously you don't need, uh, you will not need the money at that at that time. So you could pretty much start doing work for free for their uh, other charities. And that is, let's be honest, not some, that is not something that most companies do. So pretty much what, uh, how did that idea came from? Uh, pretty much how, how do you take that decision? To doing work for free or whether to assess whether to work for free or not? Uh, pretty much to do the work for these charities, organizations and things like that to try to help them out. Mm. It's a very interesting question on that and I can definitely relate to, I mean, that very moment was a couple of years ago and ever since then we've definitely evolved. I mean, seven years in, we're very strong on this part and when it comes down to free work right now, we're very, very strategic and very, very picky. I mean, we already got quite a lot of work going on at this very moment. And so at the moment, what it really comes down to is how do we strategically work with people and how can we really see it if there is a great opportunity for further strategic growth within that organization. To give you an example, I would really only take on uh, such a work if I saw and I was confident that there was going to be more opportunities in the long run for it. That's how I assess it nowadays. I mean, at the very moment, I think it's very much a strategic move, if anything. And of course, for the greater good for it. Um, we used to do a lot of charity, charity works, but nowadays um, it's really rare. I mean, there is a definite problem out there in the market, which is people not really knowing their message and how to keep that consistent and being able to visually tell their story. Um, about the services very well and that definitely is a clear niche for it. So when we started out in terms of doing a lot more of these pro bono charity works, it was more a publicity stunt to really see what would bite and get into the door. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> definitely. And it's really nice that you think about it because I have seen this uh, Pretty much Gary Vaynerchuk was <laughs> kind of chewing out on this kind in these industries and these charities because before I think they had it easier before the internet because it was they just could come up and it's like, oh we're working for a good cause and you didn't have the internet. Uh, there weren't many good causes around you. So people were more willing to help out when they reached. But now you have the internet. Now if I want, like I can support uh, some organization who is planting trees in, in the Amazon forest or something like that. And now they are, I think many of these organizations are hitting the bullet, biting the bullet because they do not know how to sell. <laughs> and I think your service pretty much falls into that category because again, like if you can donate to any good charities in the world, then if, and if you reach me to try to help so that I can help a charity, why should I pick your charity instead of all the other ones? And that's where you have to develop your sales pitch. And I think your service specifically, specifically goes into that. Yeah, absolutely. You're definitely right about that. Working with the right people is super key for it. And it's so fascinating that you say that. Um, you know, I often hear, not often, rarely nowadays, but when I do hear an organization who's starting out and they can't close, it's a really big deal. I mean, this is the soul and energy of the business. And if they can't close deals, we've got a problem here. It's either you're not really sold on your idea, you don't believe in the product in itself. And as a result, it doesn't transact people are not really understanding the ber the reason and the purpose that you exist. And I think when people don't, when people have that trouble, it's very hard for them to really get their sales pitch across the line. And that is super key being a 100% believer in your product and being able to vouch whatever it takes to go across the line and do whatever it takes to really make a difference. Yeah, that is something really important as well, and I think a, a really good lesson for anybody. Again, like uh, coming back to Gary B, he says that the reason why most people have problems in selling is that they do not believe the product that they are selling. Now, 
uh, I know for a fact, like for example, I'm really proud of the animations that we do in our business. And that's one of the reasons why I've been able to hit up with many big people in the industry. And, and, and since I've been able to give them the value as well of my strategies, of my business knowledge that many, many times they lack, uh, that is something that was able to give me the confidence into going into that. But many people I see when they start entrepreneurship that at the very deep core, they don't have that trust in their own service. They don't have that belief that they are good enough. And that's, I think that's what stopped them many times. Absolutely. I think it's very uh, very, very valid in what you just shared. I used to be about the mentality of making money, making money, making money, but I realized that money comes from exchange. When you want money, it's essentially still an exchange of something. And then going deep to that, what you just shared earlier is making sure you're having a good product. I think from day one when I started my business, and I'm pretty sure I've seen your journey as well, Rodrigo, is it's always about really making sure that that product is amazing. Amazing to a point where you do feel um, amazing and very honored to be exchanging this product and have people be able to be happily pay you this product. And I think as evolution takes place on it, I would say creating a really amazing product is number one priority and really making sure that you are solving someone's problem. Mm -hmm. And by solving that problem, by being having a really great product or service makes a ma like a massive difference, right? Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, definitely. And that is something that as well I took, like, it took me a while to get that lesson that many people are focusing on marketing and selling, but they are not focusing that much time into developing their own service or their own product and making it really well. And if you take that time into developing your service or product to make it solid, then of course you're going to have the confidence to go out and say like, yeah, I'm like really good at what I do. Absolutely. Tell me about your journey when you actually started to perfect that. When did you realize that for yourself, Rodrigo? Well, I think it, I had kind of a hint when I was starting out at the same thing with you because I, when I started my first business that was web design, I remember I spent three months doing the website and I wanted to look like really amazing because when my clients saw it, I wanted uh, for them to see it and think like, wow, this is a really great website so that they will trust me with their services by looking at my website. And then I got my first three clients and found out that they never saw my website even though I sent the link, but they didn't click it. And I thought like, wow, like I just spent three months <laughs> perfecting this thing for nobody to see it and still got the sales. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, there was something, I, I think that there gave me a lot of lessons into one hit because on one part, uh, on one side, like I learned to make the business pay for itself. And then I remember I saw your example because at some point you started redesigning your website and you had some issues and pretty much you spent like six months with just under construction in your website, but you were still getting a lot of sales. And then I started seeing a lot of people having similar thing. And by the time I left the web design uh, business and created the animation business, I had an issue like yours that we didn't even have a name. We just pretty much pulled together with a, with a small team and started working out. And there was a moment that a client told us like, hey, yeah, we want to uh, work with you, but you need to have like a corporate image. And that moment I realized I just spent one whole year selling and doing businesses and getting a lot of projects and connecting with the best in the world. And we didn't have a name, we didn't have a logo, we didn't have a website. And it's like, okay, yeah, like I, 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 really, I really went forward with this one because one year is, is too much <laughs> without a, a business name. But at the time I realized that the reason why I was able to do it was because with the team that we formed, we had like a really amazing quality of service. And that was enough to sell. And that was enough to get us like really big projects and connect us 
with really big people and and then at that moment we just choose a name pretty much based on what was free on the domain list because we were trying a lot of names and everybody everything was taken and then one wasn't it's like okay hey, let's <laughs> let's choose that and that was framefreakstudio.com <laughs> and we had a very simple website that was just the logo the reel and a button that says contact us and that was it and, and that was the starting point for us and and for many months we have that website and everybody was chewing on me here locally like the people that i knew was chewing on me that oh like you don't have like this cool image and all that it's like we just got a 30k project like <laughs> what have you got and uh, and then when I started with the interviews as well, an interview with like really big, big, big people, there was a guy who came up to me and told me like, no, look, like you have to have like a very professional set and the microphone and the camera at the time. Uh, we, did, we still didn't have the, the, the project money. and But I was still doing the interviews. I was still doing the connection with people. And then I realized that this guy, uh, he even wrote an article in some paper of his journey of not being able to find a job and that he had spent like six months on not finding a job. And it's like, you're telling me like I should post as this big professional image and I'm still connecting with these guys. And I had a lot of interviews at that moment and you cannot even find a job. <laughs> so I started getting all this information from all these angles that I think it, it took a while for me to hit but then it was like, these guys are focusing on the wrong things. Like they are just one, the image, the ego, like, oh, look at me. I'm the marketer or expert or whatever. And their service is shit. <laughs> and that's why they are yes. not getting hired. That's why they are not getting sales. And they don't even have a sales process or they don't even know who their one to fan is or who they are ideal client is. And, and, and it's a mess. And some of these guys, and this happens like, years ago and now I see these guys and they still do not know how to get a client. They still do not know who their idea client is and, and and we are doing so much better than them because of we because we know these things. Yeah, absolutely. And I think through this whole journey in itself, when we started out, uh, one of the things through my journey, my mentor has really taught me around this is it, it just has to be a minimal viable product, right? And from then onwards, it can always be evolving over a period of time. I mean, we're in the exploration of getting into videos as well, more of a video, vlogging video, having people part of that journey. And one of the things is I don't want to make it too perfect initially. I wanted to just start the ball rolling, right? And have people see the whole journey of it, see people through the evolution of it, right? Firstly, it's an iPhone and in the next minute, it's going to be like one of those HT SLR cameras and then it's going to be like a higher quality camera for that part but at least a journey of evolution. So you're starting the bar low and at least keeping the standards very low and then as over a period of time, you can start going to the high productions. But while if it's a high production from the very beginning, you're gonna to have to keep that high standard over and over and over again. And it can be very costly, especially if you're in the early stages of business. Yeah, definitely. And right now we have this kind of thinking where we put up systems that help us out to to do the work in an easier way. But back then, like I didn't have that kind of thinking yet. I was still like learning and all that stuff. And as you say, like if you like, I still have my old interviews uploaded in YouTube. And if you see the the first ones, like they are very basic. Like the camera was ugly. The the microphone was horrible as well. Like. <laughs> But I still was working and I was still was connecting with amazing people. And again, like they didn't have a problem. There was a moment where, <laughs> and again, this is funny because the critics are always there, right? Uh, they were telling me, again, nagging me about that I didn't have a cool background or this uh, high quality camera and all that. And then I interviewed one of uh, the first Academy Award winner that I interviewed. Uh, uh, his name is Tom Moore. Uh, he's the the co-founder of uh, uh, an studio called Cartoon Saloon, one of the very big ones. And if you see the interview with this guy, like he's just with his laptop camera, like he's, he's the wall that is behind him is cracked 
and dirty and has like some drawings just uh, pasted on the wall. And, and I look at that background and I think like, I, I met friends in the design school who had like posters in the wall and, and this wall like looks very similar to that. And there is this guy, again, like Academy Award winner, like multimillionaire, doing amazing projects with Netflix, with, uh, with even with Angelina Jolie, uh, has won and been nominated multiple times to Emmy Awards, Sunny Awards, Academy Awards, and win some. And there is this guy with just this horrible, shitty background. And then there is these people who are not even close to that level of success. <laughs> I think it's a very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's very interesting when you're sharing about this, right, right, Rodrigo. Since our very first interview to this very point, I think our values have really changed in that part, and it doesn't really matter about image anymore. It doesn't really matter about what the outside is. It really is about what kind of difference are you making in this world. And it's so funny as I'm flashing back into my early stages, I remember hearing that line and I'm like, whatever, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Like that totally does not resonate with me. And seven years into it right now, right? I finally now know what that really means. Once you've made a lot of money, it's good. It's great. It's like targets, right? You're just moving one next to the other. But then there is true happiness in really making a difference and impacting others where you could really add value and transform an organization. Like for us, you know, we see so many of these presentation collaterals that are just really horrible. And it's how do we take it to the next level? How do we create that wow factor? And it brings a lot of joy because we are in the organization of transformation. We are about bringing those ideas to life. And it's not just a whatever thing. It's a big deal, right? For them, it's a very big deal. We help them in standing out from it. Uh, in front of their competitors. We help them be able to clearly uh, and concisely get their vest message across, right? All these things factor in to really making sure that we help them deliver on what is really important, which is communicating well, closing the deal, being understood on what it is, the message that they have. And I think, Rodrigo, that's probably something that I've seen with you as well. And what we're just sharing about is the evolution of values, right? The evolution of uh, focusing on more of what is really important in life, correct? Would you say? Yes, yes, definitely. And there is a book, I think it's new, uh, not really sure about it, that is called uh, Barking at the Wrong Tree. And the book is all about that, like how people get so focused on the wrong things. And so, for example, there are uh, you know that I come from El Salvador, like very dangerous country, and I have seen a lot of my friends in the past, like get some money and started to wanted to show some bling and dressing really nicely, and they all get robbed. <laughs> like I, I remember a, a friend of mine when I still had a job uh, who wanted to buy a, a Mazda RX-8, I think, and we were all saying to him like, dude you're going to buy this amazing car in this country. Like you're, it's like asking to have a gun to your head. And we told him that many times he didn't listen to us and he got it. And in less than three months, uh, that's exactly what happened. Like uh, he was in a stoplight and pretty much a couple of guys uh, pulled him next to him, put a gun to his head took him away with his car, left him in the middle of nowhere, luckily, because they could have done much worse to him. Mm -hmm. And and that, that was it for the car. Like, he didn't even last three months. And, and this is the kind of things that I saw a lot growing up. Like, as soon as people got money, they want, like, getting great smartphones and, and, and speaking on it on the street just to get it, to get it raw. And, and, and I started, like, to dress not that great just so that I can give the image that I am poor and not call the attention. And and now it's like really weird because some people think that, um, especially here that I'm just uh, speaking that I haven't gotten results or anything like that because they don't see me in this nice car. But again, it's because I am here. It's because I don't want that to happen. But when I was in Europe, like 
that was a whole different thing, man. <laughs> and, and, and but the, again, when you get take these kind of lessons to business, then you start to see, okay, what are, what are the guys doing just to show off that they are this, uh, that they are winning or something like that, and when they are failing, and and what are the things that the people who are truly doing something are doing. And then that's where you get like the images on the internet that show people who are poor dressing, like really expensive. And then you, they show uh, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and they are dressing really normal, right? So there's that as well. Yeah, yeah. It definitely really sucks, you know, nowadays in this today's society where, you know what, they can't really be with themselves, right? And it's very much about image and it, it's really a horrible, you know, time to be around right now where, you know, you can't really be you. And I think that's where a lot of people are losing out on it is what's really important to them. I remember where, you know, people would really value these high cars, but like these are really expensive cars, but who are they trying to impress, right? Are they trying to impress you know, people in their circle or is it people that they don't like? It's generally people that they don't like, but I think it's also very time wasting. It's, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's awesome that they're doing it by all means. And I think uh, there is, you know, reflecting back on where it is right now, I can definitely see it as a marketing spin. You know, if you're doing it to promote your business, awesome. I can definitely see like how that would really make a massive difference. People just love Lambos. People love hot girls. People love like the bling and all that. And that's good marketing. That's really great marketing, right? Yes. And I'll tell you, it's a horrible asset to have. That's like, you know, literally depreciating every single day in itself. Yeah. I'd rather have that cash and capital be able to be uh, invested into something that's going to be giving me greater returns for that. I mean, a watch or like a car, that's going to be depreciating. And one thing that I learned through my journey is investing into stuff that moves you forward, really advances into it, right? I think even having money in the bank is probably kind of dangerous as well. Like, why don't you use that money or make that money to be working for you. Maybe you could get into investments or maybe you could start a business. Maybe you could be putting it into stocks or some sort, some sort like that. But at least making the money work for you. That's the reason why you got money, right? Is to be able to be used, but to also be able to fund for more stuff as well. That's why they say the richer get rich is because they know what to do with that money, right? They're a lot more smarter with it. It's definitely- Yeah, definitely. Um, and, seen, yeah. and also, Again, going back into the focusing on the wrong things, uh, this is something that I started to see with many other uh, animation businesses compared to us, is that when they get into a project, the questions they make, like it's all about the project, it's all about the technical uh, questions, let's say. They focus about, okay, what kind of animation, how much is going to last, all, all these kind of things. But they don't go further and for example, something that we learned uh, to do differently, I think, is to actually have a sit with the client or have a call with the client and ask them, okay, what are your goals? Uh, what is your current moment? Uh, what is your current position in your business? Uh, how much are you making? How much do you want to make? Like, what is the things that are stopping you? And, and hearing about their doubts and, for example, uh, I have in the copy of my, on all my websites, this assert that came out because I started to target uh, tec technical, blah, 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 <laughs> technical companies, software companies, things like that. And something that, that is a rule that we have with Robert and I, <laughs> Bobby, uh, another friend of ours for those who are listening to us, is that if we hear the same doubt three times, in different customers, we put that answer into our landing page. And something that was coming up with me was that uh, the clients, especially the technical ones, uh, didn't have much trust into the, <laughs> some chaos here, uh, uh, something that uh, pretty much that if they ask the same question three times, uh, then you put it into the landing page. And that was something that was coming up was that, hey, we don't trust creatives because they rarely understand our service. They rarely understand what we do. 
And I was like, okay, I got a, a, a really good point here. And I go and told them like, hey, uh, I wasn't before doing business, before doing anything, I was an IT guy. I was configuring services. I have certifications in this, this, this kind of things. And even my first business was an app developing and uh, website developing uh, company. So I do have experience with these kind of things and I can understand it. Not only that, I can understand how the client thinks because usually it's something that tech guys doesn't get is that for the tech guy, it's all about the technical stuff. It's all about uh, how much better the technology is. But for the client who is not a techie, he just wants to hear how this solution is going to help him get closer to his goal and do it that transition that translation is really effective. So when I communicated that to, to the clients who were worried that a group of creatives wouldn't understand what they do, they just walked. And then after the third time, I put this segment uh, into the website that, hey, do you have like this high uh, or a complex technological system or something like that? And I tell them like, uh, I my experience in IT, the certifications that I have and all that. And now if a client that wants to do an explainer video for a technological service that is really uh, complex to describe, reads that, like it's an instant sell. <laughs> and, and there are tiny things like that all over uh, my landing pages. And the thing is that the reason why they are there is because I went and had like 100 sales calls with the clients and recording them all to listen to them again and pretty much starting to study them and finding out what were their doubts, their pain points and all that stuff. And then again, coming back to the competition that we have is that they pretty much don't do that. <laughs> and yeah, they have spent absolutely. years not doing it. And yeah. again, like when you focus on the right thing, you can get a lot of great results. Yeah. And I think, you know, to add to that point, Rodrigo, I think it's really valid in what you just shared, but I think it's also adding the, asking the right questions as well. The combination of the two and two has made our business better than ever before. It's because we asked the right question. We delved into it. And what that means is asking the right questions is asking why, why did people turn to us? Why did they come to us? Why did they inquire about us? Why? Why did this problem come up, right? How long has this problem come up for? Why is this an issue? How is this impacting? And really understanding the space of that whole organization. And when one could really understand strategically the reason why they're actually wanting to solve that problem, you're showing empathy and you're showing understanding for what it is that they are experiencing. And that you make it very possible that you are the solution to really solving that problem. And I think a lot of businesses don't really take on that approach. And I would definitely say we've been guilty of it in our very early stages of business, right? We were doing presentations for that part, but realizing as we delved in more deeper, it was a bird's eye view. They were having problems with being able to communicate, right? And we would have just only been staying around the commodity space of the business. But as we took a step back and really delve right into it, we really found out that it was about the messaging. It was about the storytelling. How is it that we can really understand from start to finish and optimizing their sales cycle? How is it that we can improve that process and that journey? And that definitely wouldn't have been apparent if we didn't really ask the right questions. By asking the right questions is being super key in understanding and closing the deal is what we've discovered. Yeah, that is definitely true. And even for now, example, uh, in, when people want to book a call with me, I um, pretty much have a this form that they have to fill in. And this form is made in a way that it do, doesn't only allow us to see where they come from, but it actually makes makes them think and start to think like, okay, where my problem is and uh, what will be the closest solution to that? So this forum is helping us to understand better the client, but it's also helping the client to understand the problems that he has better because many of the times they are just coming like, I just want to uh, create an animated video to sell my, my website or in your case, like a presentation. But if you have those questions like, oh, well, yeah, I, I haven't sit down and, 
started to think about that in a while and and now that they are thinking in, into these answers they are starting to see other solutions and just that makes a whole difference but again if you're just focusing on getting getting the money getting the money and many do they are not not only missing this all these points that we're talking about but they are starting to get like bad clients and so far i haven't had a bad client in quite some time now like it's been i, I think about three years now that i hadn't had a, a, a bad client and and yeah that's really amazing like that is a a, a better way to keep passionate about your business to keep happy about it but if you start getting like just taking clients just because of the money you will start getting bad clients or people who are not the great fit for you and that's where burnout starts to happen that is when you start to getting angry about your business and and you want to leave it and creates a lot of different problems absolutely absolutely you're definitely right about that and when you see people starting out uh, entrepreneurship what are the most common mistakes that you see them making that they are not aware that they are making? I think a lot of people focus on the craft, but they're not promoting themselves enough. You know, I still meet businesses who are really good at what they do, but they forget a very common asset, which is being able to brand themselves, being able to put themselves out there. You know, when businesses are only just operating on referrals, that's a great, you know, service offering. That's a really great model in itself. But why not also on top of that, while referrals are coming in, you putting yourself out there and being able to educate your market. I think what a lot of organizations are not doing nowadays is putting great content out there, not putting great videos out there, not putting, not sharing their knowledge in itself. And I think this is definitely a long ball game, but it is definitely an amazing long ball game because you're essentially transforming yourself into becoming a thought leader, to becoming an industry expert, which I believe a lot of organizations are lacking in at the moment. They got great services, but listen, there's not enough people who know about their service and they need to put themselves out there over and over and over and over again and do not stop. That's the difference between someone who's an epic champion to someone who's only just playing the game, right? You want to be a super player. You want to be like a pro athlete and doing a grinding it out every single day on that part by creating rich content. And when I mean by content is really adding value, even if it's just a short quote, even if it's just a simple or small video, even if it's a small graphic or a small video that you do for yourself, it's about educating other people. And what I've seen a lot of organizations not do is that. And that's definitely the key. And with that natural, you know, referrals come in, timing takes place, right? And you get quality leads because they've been educated. They've been following you on this journey. And then one day that magical moment comes. They're like, Rodrigo, I've been seeing your videos and it's now perfect timing. Let's do business. And it's such an easier sell because you've already educated them along this journey, right? We've had this so many times now, right? And we've been consistent in sharing this constant, uh, content over and over and over again. That would be our secret weapon in terms of um, putting content out there and really marketing ourselves, which I believe is very important in business. Definitely. And I've been doing that with this other show, the Cracking Foster Shows, for those who want to see it. Uh, interviewing this, all, all these amazing people, I already have like, well, I have published 76 interviews, but I still have many more that I have to to publish in line. So it's about 83. We're cl getting close in, closer to the 100th interview. But we have been interviewing all these great people from this animation industry, uh, pretty much doing uh, all, putting all this great knowledge to everybody there. And we have been distributing them um, everywhere. And something that has started to happening now in the last year is that people uh, started to find it out in Google because they just, the, the last three people that found us in Google, just by pretty much looking something, they tell me that they look uh, the best animation company in the world. 
<laughs> and our website came up and it was like, what? That's, like, we're not the best. <laughs> like, I'm, we're not even at the level of Pixar or anything like that. But the reason why that happened is because uh, I, I think uh, it's because we had this podcast and pretty much this kind of words were coming like, oh, this guy is the best director there is about this type of art or this illustrator is the best there is that this type of art and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and during all these posts, all these keywords started like falling in line because we were interviewing the best people in the world. And now when people look for the best animation or website comes off and it's like something weird, but on another point, and again, coming back to focusing on the wrong thing, even the people who do what you say, like trying to promote themselves and, and doing these things, uh, I see that sometimes the, mis the primarily mistake that they make when they try to promote themselves is that they just start creating content, again, to impress the wrong kind of people. <laughs> they are not writing content to give value to their ideal client, but let's say if somebody is doing graphic design, they're starting a blog post to show how great a graphic design they are to other peers who do graphic design. It's like other graphic designers are not going to buy your service if you're a graphic designer. <laughs> and that's, I think, something that I see very commonly when people start trying to promote themselves. Tell me more about that. What do you mean by that? You're saying like they're just posting their portfolio and that's it? No, uh, let's say, and, and I'm saying it because in the very beginning I made the same mistake, not because I wanted to impress other people, but again, I had this, uh, I was still learning and had the mind of a tech guy who is very limited to, the, to technological things. So my mind went like, oh, okay, like I'm a website designer, then I'm going to post about making great websites uh, from a tech little point or something like that. But then Ramit Seri, one of the guys that we both follow very closely, uh, he mentioned this point that are you writing to give value to your client or are you writing for other people in your industry? Because other people in your industry will not buy from you. And I was like, oh shit, and I started reading my posts. And I was like having a, dis uh, I was writing in a way that seemed like having a discussion with another guy who did websites instead of writing from the point of view of, okay, this is something that you can do in your web design that will help you get more clients. And I was able to make the shift really fast, but again, I wasn't doing it to impress other people, but just my the limited experience that I had, I, I just started doing that. But I do see other people who start like writing, like creating posts, creating videos, creating things like that, but it's not for, to give value to the clients. And I think the effect that you say that when other people have been seeing your videos is very effective when the videos that you do are actually helpful to them. <laughs> And again, like if you are a graphic designer and you're talking about graphic design and from a point that you want to impress other graphic designers, then it's not going to connect with with somebody yeah, who seeks sense. the service. So Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. that is the mistake that I see when people start to promote themselves in, into doing vlogs, uh, blogging, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Come and think about it. That's pretty much, I've never thought about, I've never thought about impressing my other competitors. <laughs> That's not even in my dictionary whatsoever. I just, <laughs> yeah, I think we don't even do think that? about it. Doesn't even make sense. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, I think we don't even think about our own competitors. <laughs> to be honest, I have started to notice these things because, uh, so there were moments where, uh, we were pretty much filled with work and somebody came to us and we had to hire other people. And I was, and usually it was my partner who knows all the other animators and things like that. So I started to see this kind of cracks in, in, into their business models and, and, and seeing all these things. But yeah, that, that is definitely, <laughs> as you say, like, I, I think we have passed that point uh, before doing 
all this kind of content. So that is a good thing. On the other end, something that I want to ask you, this is kind of a tricky question. When I started out, I remember having all these ideas of the, let's say, of the problems that I was going to face doing the business, the things that were going to be the hardest and all that. And something that happened is that uh, along the line, uh, along the way, I realized that when these problems happened, they weren't as as hard as I thought they would be, or many times they didn't never they didn't never happen. Like I never had an issue with that. But the things that were hardest to face were the things that I never even thought about, the things that never even registered in my mind. Some problem came up and it's like for me it was like completely out of the blue and never imagined any of that. So. On the spirit of trying to find out the things that we don't know that we don't know, what was the thing that you never expected at all to come out in your career, pretty much, that came through and is really important to know? Entrepreneurship is not a walk in a park. <laughs> it's definitely not a walk in a park whatsoever you know for people who are thinking about you know getting to their first million like it's not a walk in the park man it's some freaking hard work and I think that's definitely one thing that people really need to know is they underestimate the amount of work required to get to that point right one million is only just a very bare minimum in itself right to get to five to get to ten to get twenty to get to a proper business in itself it takes a lot of hard work and people underestimate the quality and the amount of time required to really get the momentum going right number one is not enough people know what it is that you do number two is you're probably refining and understanding your service offerings for that part the third one is you got people as well. You got to find the right connections to really make it all possible for this part and also getting customer feedback, also dealing with finances as well. Like that whole thing is not a walk in a the park. There's a lot of hard work involved to really making sure you get to that pathway. I would definitely say it's more work than you expect. I like don't think it's a walk in a park because it's definitely not a walk in a park. It's going to be blood, sweat, and tears over and over and over again. And I would definitely say grit is definitely being the strongest thing that I have is being able to be persistent, relentless, and determined to make it happen. And if you don't have those things, this whole, th this whole deal in itself is most likely not for you. You know, I speak to quite a lot of entrepreneurs and they have this. They have this persistent, like, ruthless attitude that they're determined to make shit happen. And that, I would say, is the most unexpected thing. Luckily, I have that skill. I mean, I developed it uh, along the way, but I would say that in itself is super key. If I didn't have that, I would give it up ages ago. Gone for a job, that's totally fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if I didn't have that, like, that's... It was a no-brainer. I would have totally left. But to have that killer instinct, to have that skill set was super key to my success up to this very point. And something that I pretty much found out as, along the way as well, like you were saying, is that, well, first of all, most people I see that they are, let's say, very afraid of feeling bad, of feeling any negative emotion, for starters. Then there is the other thing that uh, they don't want to hurt other people. They don't want to hurt the feelings and things like that. And in business, especially if you are like really, really focused on getting things done really well and as fast as humanly possible, then you cannot care too much about other people's feelings. Like you need to be able to communicate what you want directly. Uh, being firm about it and something it's not that you're being rude about it it's just that you're being blunt because you don't want to waste time but, but sometimes it's, especially if the other the people receiving that is a little bit soft let's say they might take it 
badly and feel bad and if you and if you're trying to kind of uh, let's say protect the feelings of other people uh, that just slows you down and the thing is that you might think that it's not slowing you down that much that it doesn't matter that much but when you have to do that over and over again maybe if five times a day, 15 times a day, especially when you start working with other people and when you start summing that up and to, and, and again, like if you want to protect the feelings, you, then you have to go super soft in what you are want to say and then you have to explain what you wanted. And again, do that 20 times a day if you have a team. That takes a lot of time, and when you start adding day by day by day by month by month by month, like it, it really takes a lot of time. And at least for me, I, I really want, uh, I am not interested in making things harder than they should. Because again, as you say, it is it's not a walking the part. It's already hard enough. It's, it's like really, really hard enough already. And I don't want to make it harder, any harder than it should be. So that time, on the term, I really want to advance as fast as possible. And at some point, like you, you have to go hard. If if somebody is not understanding, you will have to, hey, I, I want this done this way, fast, like uh, uh, as humanly possible. And and then oh, but maybe I'm not feeling that well. It's like then another guy who wants the job, right? <laughs> but. But yeah, I think many people do not want to go into that kind of battle, let's say, of kind, mm. that kind of hardships of dealing with negative feelings. And I just learned to, like, I don't even care about my bad feelings. <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel like doing the things. Sometimes I don't feel like contacting people. It still has to happen. It, it is it, that that is not relevant, right? So again, yeah. that 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 I think is something that stops many people. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, I've been guilty of those moments as well. You know, especially when I feel, when I don't feel like doing it, I still have to do it, right? But I'll tell you this, this is something I would say, it would be great, Rodrigo, to even share this with you as well. There's always a reason why you don't want to do something. And something I've learned along the way is definitely about what inputs you're putting into your system. It always generally stems from either you're pretty much either last night you had a drink or like you overate or maybe you had too big of a lunch and all these things affect your behavior in wanting to do something. Like nowadays, I factor in every single part. Did I have enough sleep? If I didn't have enough sleep, I know for sure it's going to be difficult for me to smash some of my goals, right? If I didn't eat well, that's definitely another thing. If I didn't, if I have some really horrible friends around my life who are just nagging and complaining about life and not really want to do something about it, that makes a massive difference too. You know, if your environment is really horrible too, if you're living with horrible people around where the space is not allowing you to promote and do good in life, like it's going to affect your performance hands down, right? Yeah, to be honest, that is really important. And I found out when I was in Europe, in Bulgaria, for example, everything is grown organic, uh, naturally. There is no GMOs over there, anything at all. And there were two things that happened. So, for example, just to give you an idea, again, some other very bad place, uh, we had to put in our house a uh, uh, razor wire uh, around the house. and I remember that when I find pretty much we put two lines of razor wire around the house, but when they finally finish and I saw the work finish, I remember that I felt uh, like a lot more relaxed. But the thing is that I didn't notice that I wasn't relaxed until that point. And I was like, shit, I've been carrying with this kind of worrying back in my head for so long that it didn't register anymore, but it was there. It was consuming my, my mental resources. And when I saw that, uh, that line of defense pretty much installed, that uh, there was 
some calm that and some mental resource that was liberated completely. And when I was living in Europe and when I was in Bulgaria, like in, in the beginning, there were some things that were freaking me out. Like, for example, I was able to see the windows that were like really big and crystal and, and even I could fit in them. <laughs> And there were no defenses around the window. So my parents, I started like going out like, holy shit, like people can enter here like very easily. And I just started repeating myself like, I'm not there anymore, I'm not there anymore, I'm not there anymore, I'm not in my country anymore. And when it finally hit, uh, pretty much that I really wasn't in danger anymore, that I was safe, that uh, everything was fine. I realized that my mind was able to solve problems really fast. I was able to think faster, better, deeper, like the energy was way up. And I was like, damn, like I was been carrying this with my whole life and, and and the quality of my thoughts of my function here is way different than I would have back home. And then again, coming back with what you eat, I, Everything in Bulgaria is like very healthy. Like you have both options, but let's say, for example, in in this side of the world, in America, like you want to eat healthy, it's really expensive. If you want to eat badly, it's it's really cheap. But in Europe, it's like the price for both foods are the same, and and they taste amazing. <laughs> and so you can eat healthy really easily, and it's available in all restaurants. So. After a while, I started to really find out, like, the, what you say, like, if you start eating well, like, this thing is start working way better. And I realized that I had way more energy that I could use that I wasn't using. And, and yeah, that definitely makes a huge difference. Wow. Thanks for sharing that earlier. <laughs> I know there were small things could really make a massive difference, but, you know, especially living in a location where your survival is really in place, it's, it definitely affects it. I mean, it even goes to the point where I started to really understand now the temperature of the room, right? To the temperature of the room. Like if it's too cold, you're in survival mode, right? You're just trying to like cuddle up and you won't be able to focus. These little things make a massive difference. And I, and I would honestly um, give it all the respect of being honest with myself. I think if I wasn't honest with myself, none of this would have been possible, right? Really being honest with myself and really truly listening to my feedback and really reflecting on, okay, so why didn't it work well? Why was it that it didn't work well? What went wrong? What did I do differently? What could I've done better, right? And what could I do more of, right? And feeding more of those doing good of and understand it. Because everyone's got a great day. Everyone has a great day. But no one actually understands and really analyzes why it was a great day. It was a great day probably because you went for a gym or you ate some great food, you caught up with some friends on this part. These are all like factors and key elements to what creates the perfect gym. And I apply this to definitely business as well, right? You analyze like a campaign, what was working well, what wasn't, right? You're doing more of what's working and removing what wasn't. And you constantly do this over and over again with your personal life, with your relationships, with your business, with just life, honestly. And then as a result, you'll see it's a trajectory of, you know, it's going to be like a hockey stick uh, growth, right? It's not linear like this. It's yeah. like potential growth and imagine you did that every single day by the end of the year you know that you've progressed more than anything else and can you imagine in 30 years time how much of a difference that would be 50 years time you'd be like grandmaster right yes yes and, and i think people really really underestimate what they can achieve by taking these kind of principles into just one year alone, as you say, like just one year alone can make a huge difference. And yeah, again, as you say, the even the temperature of the room is really important. I have even got uh, back here because it's, over here it's not the cold, it's really hot all the times. And when it gets really badly hot, like I started to find out that my brain wasn't working correctly, like I was really sluggish and I was like, yeah, that was it. This is going to be very expensive and it's going to increase the uh, pretty much the electricity bill. 
but I don't care. Like I, I rather work better <laughs> and make way more money <laughs> than dealing with this heat wave. And, and I set up my uh, air, con air conditioning it. So pretty much everything is always at the right temperature. Even uh, right now I'm wanting to buy this thing called the chili pad, which is pretty much like a, a, a bed sheet of, that has tubes of water that you put in your bed. And there is a key pretty much where you set up the temperature that you want so that you can sleep perfectly in it. And, and that's, that is a recommendation from Tim Ferriss. And since I saw it, it's like, yeah, I need to get it. Because I realized, as, uh, again, like when I was in Europe and I went, went in winter, first of all, I was like really happy to feel cold instead of the, the, the massive heat waves. But the second is like just being uh, cool in your bed with, with nice sheets and all that, like that created the best sleep I ever had in my life. <laughs> and that helps too with entrepreneurship as well. That's good, that's good. But yeah, definitely tracking things, really important. Analyzing things, really important as well. So something that I want to ask you, <laughs> this is going to be a hard question, but let's say you wake up tomorrow, different dimension. Nobody knows about you. Everything is very similar, but you have all your knowledge or your experience, $500 in your pocket. What do you do to get back to this point, professionally speaking, as soon as possible in the last time? Yeah, as soon as possible. I'm going to use all my skills and knowledge. I would get out there and I would start just take, picking up the phone calls and just start ringing. <laughs> start going into offices, um, open up the yellow pages, probably open up LinkedIn if LinkedIn is available at that time and really just start connecting with people, start finding out what problems they have, seeing um, what it is that's currently going on in their space and seeing how it can offer a solution. It's pretty much simple. I mean, business is very much solving a problem. That's definitely something that I would have is being able to just pick up where I started off or actually from nothing, probably go to the library, search online, go on LinkedIn and just start having coffee with people and really speaking to people who have money. <laughs> I think that definitely would make a difference and just understanding their state and seeing how it could really service them, help them would be uh, where I would begin. Awesome. And is there any advice that if you've ever met a young driven student that has a lot of talent and is about to enter the real world, let's say, what advice would you give that person and what advice should that person ignore? Um, I think the advice that they should be is if it was an art student and if they're really passionate about a particular craft or they, they have something that they're really good on, don't stop on that. I think a lot of people are gravitating more towards their creative spin. So if you have your own unique spin, stay true to that if you can and see how you can transform that into an exchangeable money. So if let's say you're really loving coding or developing websites or just design, see how you can translate that, that skill set into something that people are willing to pay for is what I would definitely say. And seek out to solve a problem, right? It may be very much taking an element of what you have right now and putting your skill set into a different arena. So let's just say hypothetically you're a designer. A lot of designers typically want to work with creative agencies. Well, I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a massive need in the corporate space. A lot of these corporate people have no idea how to design. And maybe your skill set, your uniqueness has an opportunity to really add value to an area that's not saturated, right? See how you can creatively bridge the gap of your unique skill and what problems are in the market is definitely the advice I would give to someone who's coming out of university. Awesome. And what advice should that person ignore? Ignore. People who don't have money, people who are not successful, 
I would definitely ignore anything that's coming out from someone that isn't successful at all. Like that's definitely a key. I would say is stop listening to shit people. If you have yeah. shit people in your life, stop listening to them. Like let's be whatever comes out of their mind, their mouth. If they're saying something like they're advising you on something and stopping you from doing what you want to do, just ignore them. I mean, just be respectful for what they have. They obviously care about it. But understand that you got to do things on your terms and understand that they're probably jealous that you are taking action in your life. So understand that that's super key. Stick to your roots is more important. Sticks to your best roots is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yes, that is an amazing advice. It's also an advice that's going to, if, if whatever, whoever is hearing this podcast right now uh, follows that advice, uh, that you should know that this is going to piss off a lot of people. <laughs> it did really piss off a lot of people around my life when I started doing that because, some, again, people were coming to me giving, giving me their advice. And I will ask, is this person, like, really living life as they want to? Like, really living life at, at their own terms? Are they really happy? Are they... or are, Even just, are they even on the path of getting there? Even if they are not there yet, they are, are they on the path of getting there? And most of the times, the answer will be a hard no. And then I will just soon out. And when I started making that, when I made that choice of listening to the people who were either already uh, built the life that they wanted or were right into the path of doing that and stop listening to all the people, like, Uh, at least my circle of people at that time, which is long gone now, <laughs> uh, they got really angry. <laughs> and and yeah, it comes back to, uh, this is something that I uh, slipped up my mouth a moment ago. As you say, like being brutally honest with yourself, that is something that I have been getting deeper and deeper lately in the last two years. And I have come, and, and this is so hard to stress, how important this is, but I am starting to see at this level that if I betray the integrity of the values that I have chosen for this path, if I just put a foot out of my own path, if I not be 100% honest with myself and kind of want to tweak this thing it comes to bite me in the ass later <laughs> way harder at least five times harder sometimes can be 50 times harder or more and it's so crazy but yes you say like being honest man <laughs> that's really huge that's really a, a game changer on itself Absolutely, absolutely. I'm glad that it impacted you. Yeah, definitely. And so, is there any last advice that you would like to give before we finish this interview that we haven't talked yet into the interview so far? Um, I think that honest is a very good end to note. Um, yeah, a good point to really conclude on. I think, you know, given with this whole social media game as well where people care about the image be brutally honest with yourself stop doing things that don't make you happy let's let's be honest <laughs> if it doesn't make you happy if you got some shitty friends that are just not supportive on that journey and who you are they don't like you they just keep dissing you then stop hanging out with them like you know you are an amazing human being and you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do like Just don't do it, you know? Like you, you're an amazing person and don't forget that, right? And I think it's super important that uh, people are reminded that they have a journey, they have a life and you could do whatever you want to do if you put your mind to it. And what that means is really being honest with yourself. What is it that you can cut back? What is it that you can do more of that would really move you closer? That's probably one thing that I would add to is Find out where you currently are right now and where you want to be and look at the difference. 
look at the difference of where it is that you are right now, where you want to be and draw a line, draw actually a few lines. Are you even closer to it? Is it kind of going straight or is it kind of like doing this going backwards, right? Really being honest with yourself and mapping that out. We recently did an exercise with the unspoken pitch on really finding out the current state of it and where we want to be. And as a result, we have a straight line big time, right? And there were some things that we definitely have to be honest that we kind of dropped the ball in, but we quickly identified that and we channeled all our energy moving towards that. And that's why today has been a really great time talking to you because really understanding your values and what it is that you can offer and understanding where you got to go and being brutally honest on where you are currently to going to where you are makes a massive difference. That's definitely the final words I would definitely say. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Not being 100% aligned to your vision can be the equivalent of having the Ferrari, like putting the feet, the pedal to the metal, like going all hard without taking the the handbrake off. Like if you're not really aligned or again, like if one of the wheels of the car is at one side and the other is still the other, like it's, it's catastrophe. And, and I'm, I'm talking again in this technical level, but what you're saying, like being able to map where you want to be, where you are, and where are your efforts pointing out? And, and that is very important. Because yeah. you will find out if you do that very honestly, you will find out that some of your efforts are not pointed at the direction that you want. Yeah, that's right. Cool. <laughs> so if people want to find more about you, where can they do so? Um, they can visit the unspoken pitch.com or they can find me on LinkedIn, Scott Lee, S C O double T, and my surname is Lee, L double E. Uh, I should be the only one on LinkedIn on that part. If anything, see my smiley face on that. Um, let me know if you have any questions on that part, but happy to definitely connect. Awesome. Thanks a lot for your time, Scott, and uh, being here and being an amazing guest. I truly appreciate it. So, cheers. So this has been the first episode of Level Up. I really hope that you like it. And if you like it, please click the like button below or subscribe to our podcast. Until next time.